Hey everyone, Paul here again with another exclusive demo video for our, all of our SQL Skills Insiders. This one goes with the second of the Quick Tips newsletters from March 2011. In this demo, what I want to do is show you the difference in logging that occurs for bulk logged versus full recovery models for a select insert. There's been some discussion on this uh, online and on Twitter on the SQL Help hashtag. A couple of people have blogged about it, but I want to show you a bit more in depth about what's going on. So what I'm going to do is create a database to play around with. And what I'm doing here is, by turning off auto create statistics, I want to make sure that there's no um, background stuff that's happening that's going to kind of pollute what we're seeing in the transaction log, just to kind of keep it simple. So there's my database created, and then I'm going to create a source table with um, 100 rows of kind of random data that I'm going to use as where I'm selecting from in my select insert. So I'll go ahead and do that. And if you've never seen this before, the go with a, a number of um, executions is a really cool thing for if you're putting together demos or you want to execute something a, a certain number of times. I, I think it's incredibly useful. So first off, let's do the re full recovery model. So I'm going to switch the database into the full recovery model and then do a checkpoint to kind of clear out the log. Now, you might think, well, the checkpoint's not going to clear the log because I'm in the full recovery model, but that's not true. Until I do a full database backup, this database is going to be in what's called the pseudo simple recovery model in term and that means that a checkpoint will clear the log however the logging that occurs in other words what log records are generated is done as if you're in the full recovery model so it kind of behaves as if it's in full and as if it's in simple until you do that first backup and then everything behaves as if it's in full but for our purposes it's going to do proper full logging for us so we're going to the full recovery model and then what I'm going to do is do my select insert. So I'm just doing a very simple select star into the destination table from source table. I'm going to do it inside a, an explicit transaction so that I can have a look and see exactly how much transaction log was generated. Of course, the difference between bulk logged or simple and full is that a minimally logged operation in bulk logged or simple is going to generate an awful lot less transaction log records than in the full recovery model. That's the whole point. It allows your transaction log not to have to grow so much. Log backups, on the other hand, will be roughly the same size because a log backup of a minimally logged operation has to also pick up all those data extents that were changed. But anyway, that's beside the point. So I'll go ahead and do my, my transaction and my select into. And then let's have a look and see how much transaction log was generated. So we can use the DMV sys.dm tran database transactions, which will give me, amongst other things, exactly how many... Um, bytes of transaction log have been generated by all active transactions. So I'm going to look for this DMV and I'm going to um, basically search only for things that are um, accessing my particular database. 49,828 bytes. Okay, so let's make a quick note of that. 49,828. So that we can compare it against the amount of transaction log generated in the bulk log recovery model. Now, what about in the actual log. And here's where people were getting confused online. In that people were expecting to see a whole bunch of single record inserts. Now you might be thinking, well look, there's a whole bunch of single record inserts, but they're not the, uh, the, the inserts that you're thinking that they are. So anyway, let's have a look and see what's going on here. Here's the start of my transaction. So if we scroll across, remember back in the code, I called my transaction Paul's trend. So if we go back over here and scroll across all the way to the transaction name, we will see there. There's my transaction name. So that's the begin trend for my particular transaction. Now, what about all this other stuff? All these inserts that are happening. What are these for? These are not inserts into my destination table. These are inserts into the various hidden system tables. Okay? And these are creating all of the metadata for my destination table. So we get a whole bunch of this stuff. In fact, none of this is for our destination table. If we go across, all of these things are for the system tables. Look at the allocation unit name. It's not until we get here that we see the first thing being done for our destination table. 
So what's happening here is before we can insert anything into our table, we have to allocate what's called an IM page, an index allocation map bitmap, to track the fact that things are being allocated to this particular index. So here's us allocating our IM page. Um, we are marking it as an IM page in the PFS bitmap that tracks that. And there's us allocating a page in and, mar and marking it as allocated in the single page slot array at the top of the IM page. So that's a little bit more detail that I was, I was gonna go into. But here's the crux of uh, the confusion. People were expecting to see insert row, log records, but that's not how it worked for an insert select. What it actually does is it does this. So what it's done is it's created a data page in memory it's inserted as many rows as it can into that data page. And then instead of logging multiple insert row log records, it's, modif it's logging the entire page image. So that's what that LOP format page is. It's logging an entire page image. And if we have a look over at the size of that log record, okay, the log record is pretty small because all it's done is it's modified the header to start with. Now it's ready to go and actually insert the records. So it goes and grabs a whole bunch of identity values. Then if we look at this page, the log record has written out the entire page, 8,276 bytes, writing out an 8,192 byte page image. But are there any insert rows? No. And then we go and grab a whole bunch more rows, a whole bunch more identity values, and down here, and so there's all kinds of other stuff going on in the background. Down here, we log another page format. We grab some more identity values, we log another page format, and so on, and so on, logging another page format. Let's see the size of this one, 8,276, all the way down to the end of our transaction. So what we're seeing in the, um, well, let's make sure we get to the end of our transaction. Oh, of course, we won't see the end of our transaction because I didn't do a commit yet, I left it open. So what we're seeing is these inserts are occurring, but they're not being logged as inserts. The entire page with all the records already on the page is being logged. So we're seeing a lot fewer log records than we would expect to see actually doing the, the inserts themselves. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing in bulk log recovery model. So I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna drop that table, I'm gonna commit the transaction, then I'm gonna to switch to the bulk log recovery model. I'll do a checkpoint again, that's gonna flush out my log. And then let's do exactly the same thing, but we're now in bulk logged. So we do our select into. And let's see how much transaction log was generated. 6,072 bytes. Now how much was generated in the full case? 49,828 bytes about somewhere between seven and eight times more transaction log was generated, which of course is exactly what we'd expect because now we're using the bulk logged recovery model. We're doing a minimally logged operation, or I should say an operation that can be minimally logged. And in this case, it is very obviously being minimally logged. So let's have a look and see what was actually in the log. So this I'm guessing is our transaction. Let's just make sure this is where it's starting. Our transaction name, pull strand. Okay, perfect. So here we we see all these inserts again, but again, these are not the inserts we're thinking they are. These are all for the system tables, creating our destination table. Oops. So scrolling down, it's not gonna be till I would guess around here that we're starting to see things happening in the actual um, destination table. Now let's have a look. Do we see any insert rows or do we see any uh, format page log records in around these identity values? No, nothing. All that's happening is a page is being allocated. It's being marked as allocated to this object. Another page gets allocated and marked as being allocated to this object. The actual values themselves are not being logged because this is the bulk load recovery model. What's happening is that these pages, when I commit this transaction, those pages will be flushed to disk. However, the log records only say a page was allocated. So very different in terms of what actually get logged there. Let's go ahead and clear up after ourselves. 
So you can see now not just that bulk logged obviously logs an awful lot less than full for a minimally logged operation, but the log records that get generated in each case are very interesting to look at. And in the full recovery model case, it is not individual inserts that occur for a select into, it is full page logging, which really cuts down on the amount of log records that get generated. And if you're looking at the transaction log to try and figure out what's going on, it can be pretty confusing. Anyway, I think that's a really interesting thing to look at, a bit deeper than um, most of the stuff I'm going to be doing in videos, I guess, but I thought this was a good thing to show you all. Thank you all very much for being SQL Skills Insiders, and until next time, goodbye.